Hi, welcome to the Inclusive Storytelling Podcast. I'm your host, Ashwini Prasad. And if you are interested in bringing more belonging and inclusion to the entertainment industry, feel free to connect with me and let's talk. I am at theinclusivescreenwriter.com and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at The Inclusive Screenwriter. Elizabeth Marie Tallchief was born on January 24, 1925, and was a U.S. American ballerina. She was considered the United States' first major prima ballerina. Elizabeth Marie Tallchief was from the Osage Nation and is said to be the first First Nation or Indigenous person to hold the rank of prima ballerina. She also revolutionized ballet. She started formal ballet lessons at the age of three, and her family moved from Oklahoma to Los Angeles to actually advance the careers of Elizabeth's sisters, who would also become dance professionals as well. At age 17, Elizabeth Marie moved to New York City in search of a spot with a major ballet company, and she took the name of Maria Tallchief. She spent five years with the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, where she met choreographer George Balanchine. When Balanchine co-founded what would become the New York City Ballet in 1946, Tall Chief became the company's first star. In 1949, Elizabeth's role in the Firebird took her to the top of the ballet world and definitely established her as a prima ballerina. Her role as a sugar plum fairy in the Nutcracker actually transformed this ballet from being in obscurity to a very popular one, especially during the winter season in the United States. Elizabeth Marie traveled the world, becoming the first U.S. American to perform in Moscow's Bolshoi Theater. She made regular appearances on U.S. American television before she retired in 1966. After retiring from dance, Elizabeth Marie Tallchief was active in promoting ballet in Chicago. She served as a director of ballet for the Lyric Opera of Chicago for most of the 1970s. Elizabeth Marie Tallchief on April 11, 2013, passed away and she, her legacy continues as being the first person, first person from the Osage Nation and the first indigenous prima ballerina. William Mankiller is honored and recognized as the first female principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. She was the first woman elected as a chief of a major First Nation tribe. She spent her life fighting for the rights of First Nations people. Born on November 18, 1945, in Oklahoma, this is where Wilma Mankiller was born, and she was the sixth of 11 children. When she was 11, the family moved to San Francisco, which was California's part to move Indigenous and First Nation people with the promise of big jobs in big U.S. cities. Her father became a warehouse worker and a union organizer. And in 1993, in an interview, Wilma noted that she had really her own little trail of tears because of the forced removal of Cherokees from the Southeast by federal troops. The federal occupation of Alcatraz Island in 1969, which was for about 18 months, really influenced Wilma. The group IAT, Indians of All Tribes, claimed under the Treaty of Fort Laramie that Alcatraz Island should be reverted back to indigenous folks. This was because the Treaty of Fort Laramie noted that any retired, abandoned, or out-of-use federal land was to be returned to indigenous peoples who once occupied it. Alcatraz had been closed since March 21, 1963. The IAT noted that Alcatraz should be returned back to the First Nation group. A side note, 
actor Benjamin Pratt lived actually on Alcatraz as a child. He spent at least two nights per week there with his mother and his siblings. His mother was an immigrant from Peru. And he notes in an interview that the island was actually a playground for him and his sisters. So when Alcatraz happened, Wilma noted that she really know, knew what she needed to be done so that the world knew that First Nation people had rights to. In 1985, Wilma was elected to serve as the principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. She led as the first female chief for 10 years, guiding the sovereign nation whose population had doubled from 68,000 to 170,000 during her tenure. She was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1993 and in 1998, she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Bill Clinton of the United States, which is the nation's highest civilian honor. She has an autobiography out, Mankiller, A Chief and Her People, which was published in 1993. Wilma Mankiller died on April 6, 2010, at the age of 64 from pancreatic cancer. Thanks so much for listening. Be sure to like, subscribe, download, and leave a review. And be sure to connect with me at the Inclusive Screenwriter.